All right, y'all, what's going on? It's the one. We're back in here with another video. Uh, I'm not walking today. I mean, I'm gonna walk today, but I think it's probably the best time I feel good to, to pretty much chat with y'all and check in. So uh, it's Wednesday, hump day, middle of the week. I hope you're grinding and getting to it. Uh, doing something professional, doing something side gig, hustling. It's almost no choice at this point because of the way that the, uh, the, the economy, the, the way that jobs are now they suck um many of them it's only warehouse amazon warehouse retail restaurants outside of that you have to have some type of skill or or uh some trade right so um i say this if your hustle's running dry a good investment could be into skills and to yourself and you know learning how to do something because nowadays um and you even have to compound the fact that it's not enough to learn how to do something, but you want to have some experience in doing work. Um, like here where I'm living, uh, you know, I run across a lot of guys who are in the construction and renovation and home repair. And, and it's almost competitive, probably do a lot of it probably due to the immigration that's going on. Um, like you see a lot of Mexican, Latino workers that are heavily in that uh, field. And um, how are you going to compete with that without marketing yourself, without having a, a catalog of work you already did? So you, everybody wants to see experience, even if you're a programmer. So, but that's just my side tidbit. I'm really not in, this channel is not geared towards that. It's geared towards uh, take, do, whatever you do, as long as you have something left over, we're gonna look into the, the best option, the lifeboat that's gonna save us, <laughs> if you will, out of this uh, deteriorating environment, this deteriorating economy and society, which is Bitcoin, because it is a scarce, desirable asset, um, and it has been known to uh, be a hedge against inflation and geopolitical instability. So this is what this channel has been all about. So, anyways, I wanted to just chime in. I'm chilling uh, right now outside. It's, the weather's very nice, especially when I'm under some shade. Um, I don't have much time because I got to get back to doing what I'm doing. But uh, I did notice today, um, I just was thinking back to the past couple of days. I spoke to a couple of clients about Bitcoin. Uh, only as an afterthought. I don't speak about it much because it's, you know, you got to know who your audience You got to gauge your audience. Some people are open to that idea. Some aren't. But it just happens that I run across a lot more older people people going into their retirement or they're deep into their career these are people with the wealth at the end of the day and they're more open-minded to the idea of bitcoin even though they may not know what it is their their curiosity is there as to oppose is what i do speak to younger people who don't know really know what bitcoin is understand it they're more closed off they're more into they get real estate they get stocks maybe um they get business right want to have their own business want to be free but they don't understand bitcoin and that's crazy because um time is on their side when it comes to an asset like bitcoin right they can hold it they can buy some hold it i mean four years one cycle two cycles two cycles go by which is roughly eight years and, and uh, they'll be glad that they did it they'll be thankful that they did it uh that they did actually store some of their time and energy savings into the into this savings technology bitcoin but the older people who don't have much time left they're they're open they are you know for instance you know the guy who i had a meeting with yesterday or uh yet yeah, yesterday i talked about my previous video he's he's open he's open to tech investing and that's how i started that's how i discovered bitcoin was through tech i was tech investing i was investing into snapchat you know um when it first started you know going public i guess when it started getting popular they had these snapchat shades right they were coming out with tech to go with the app so the shades were like people can put the shades on and it's like a camera and so therefore when people go on to snapchat and they see your stories they can see it through the eyes of what you see and it was a it was just a great way of getting your perspective on what you see on your day-to-day -to, -day to make really cool stories right i thought that was dope I, I and the thing was what made it even more dope 
is that they were only available through vending machines. So that's the only way you could get the shades. You could they weren't sell, sold in retail stores or any website. They just did a tour of their own vending machine that they dropped in major cities. And these major cities, these uh, locations were undisclosed. It would just be like, hey, we're here right now. Get here. And it created demand frenzy like crazy. It was a great marketing uh, scheme. And I kept my eye on it because I realized that there was a market for it. It was uh, very scarce. The demand was there. The hype was there. Because it was just some cool tech that you can go. You put your card in their vending machine and, and you'll get a tube with these shades. And so... Um, I, at the time, I was living in New York City, and I knew that they had to visit New York City. I mean, this is the ultimate. That was that was the ultimate hub for everything. If you want to create some type of attention or hype for your business or whatever, so I watched carefully. They were on the West Coast for a while because they'll usually release the locations where they were previously at, and uh, they'll let you know that they're traveling somewhere, but they never tell you. So one day they. They uh, came out and said, hey, we're over here in time, near Times Square or Central Park, Central Park, some location. And uh, we'll be there at this time. And so by the time I got there, it was a line around the block. And I got in that line. And my idea was to get my hands on the, uh, uh, as many pairs as I could as they allowed at once. Once you got up to this one vending machine. There was only one vending machine that was traveling the country. And um, I think the specs or the, the shades were like $160 at the time. And I said, I'm going to get as many as I, as I can. I got a, had a little old credit card, um, no balance on it. And I said, I'm going to max it out. And because I knew that these shades were selling on the black market or you can say eBay or Amazon for like at least three times. And I knew if I could get my hands on like five of them, I could make some quick profit. I did. They were sold easily on Amazon. It's, I mean, I've turned over so much on Amazon from that hustle, from that flip, that uh, they locked my account. And they tried to say, you need to register as a business at this time. And it was crazy. But my idea was always tech. So I, under, you know, sidetrack the older people who have the capital they're into tech they are open to bitcoin and that's dope so that's what i related to him i'm open to tech and that's how i found bitcoin too but i'm not as old i just been around them the uh that demographic a lot from being in working in finance and uh retail banking anyways so i thought that was interesting guys pay attention uh the older crowd who has the money they'll get in when they are heavily recommended by their investment advisors or they will find out on TV and then they will ask their investment advisors and that's how it works. So time, you're in the right spot if you're already there. Uh, also, I wanted to share too. Accumulation is happening. Even though that the prices are where they are, I think prices are great right now for a pickup because accumulation is still happening. The Bitcoin ETFs the last 30 days are... Um, have net positive inflows for the last 30 days um, I think just yesterday alone was net positive inflows like almost 200 million but I think uh, over the last 30 days it's definitely over a billion dollars in net inflows so they're still accumulating this is what I'm telling you these ETFs are still accumulating Bitcoin so whatever is out there in the market being sold whatever you hear somebody's buying majority of it um, over time at some point there's not going to be too many sellers left meaning too many people who's willing to sell at these prices and so uh, yeah you guys pay attention um, I just want to chime in and we're under 10 minutes check out links in the description if you're accumulating Bitcoin still if you want some non-KYC check out the links to hodlhodl.com just a username password create an account um, check out the other links for great wallets if you're looking to store your Bitcoin safely. You need a backup wallet if you already have one as well. That's very uh, savvy. And also check out the link down below for a great book. Uh, short book that will help people understand Bitcoin if you're willing to share. Uh, if you're continuing to try to help people understand it, check out the book down below. 
Um, I really appreciate y'all taking your time out with me. I'm going to get ready to head out until next time.